So this past weekend, you know, I hung out with some of my friends. You know, we chopped it up. I don't know how we really got into the conversation, but the conversation we had motivated me to want to do this video. And it was along the lines of black men owning businesses or wanting to own businesses and wanting to work for self. And so in this video, I want to talk about or rather give my perspective, my viewpoint on the idea of how black men are considered lazy. I want to talk about the hypocrisy of how you make money. I want to go into the legal, I want to go to legal and illegal resources that are available in your neighborhood. Where black people stand as far as ownership and the passing down to another generation. And of course, I want to go into the infamous statement created by black people, quote unquote, the white man's bitch. And how that's a contradiction. So I'm going to give my viewpoint on these subtopics. Now, the conversation that was going on this past weekend, you know, when it comes to this particular issue or topic, a buddy of mine brought up a point about how before blacks were shipped out of Africa and placed in this capitalistic society, the number one priority for blacks were basic survival. You know, just what do you have to do to put and keep a roof over your head? What do you have to do to, to, to feed yourself? You know, etc etc they didn't they didn't work for somebody they worked for themselves they worked to feed their village they did it on their terms and he was saying that black people have been robbed of that because of this capitalistic european system that happens to give off the perception of if you want to you know make a decent living you better follow these guidelines or else there's going to be consequences if you choose to go outside these guidelines you know in order for you to get a job you have to get a diploma in order for you for you to have a successful career, you got to go to college, get this degree, and also got, you got to get certified. And if you don't want to do that, and if you want to try to make money the the, the way that's that we deemed as illegal, you're going to get punished for it. And you know, and another partner was like, another partner of mine was like, black people, you know, black people, black men, they're not lazy. They just want to have control of their own destinies as well as their families. But you have black people, well, you have black men who don't have the patience nor the luxury of just taking a path that's deemed moral and the correct way to go based on our society. Instead, they take the alternative route that, that's looked at as illegal and that's against the law. Uh, another point that was brought up was how... They said that it was it's it's sla yeah it's slavery to work for somebody and to make them rich you know like your boss your CEO they get the whole turkey on the plate but you're given a one wing plate you know and he was like he was like black men they want to work to get the whole plate but the thing is is that you have black men who don't know how to go about getting the whole turkey plate you have black men who are going about getting the whole turkey plate the wrong way. And you also have black men who've been conditioned that it's not important to get the whole turkey plate. Just be satisfied with the wing. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> my personal opinion about black men wanting the whole turkey plate, i.e. owning their own business, working for self, is that according to this society that we're living in, you know, black people, we're going about getting the turkey the wrong way selling things illegally whether it be drugs your body someone else's body or uh firearms weapons yeah you generate money but based on our society it's illegal but my thing is just because it's illegal doesn't make it wrong and because it's legal doesn't make it right seems like, i mean that's the philosophical question what is right and what is wrong on how you generate money what is right what is wrong on how you generate money you can't sell drugs on the corner but you can purchase pharmaceutical drugs over-the-counter drugs in the stores and if you just happen to take more than one dose under a minute you're dead or you can go to your corner store and buy alcohol and cigarettes that has the potential of you getting lung cancer Alcohol, you get alcohol poisoning. You know it has the potential of shutting shutting down or damaging your organs, and you eventually end up dead. But yet people are making billions of dollars off of you damaging your body, you getting arrested for DUIs, or you laying in your own puke. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's legal to purchase such products. You know, it's illegal for you to buy firearms in the streets, but it's legal for you to purchase a firearm at Walmart, for example. And it's, you know, it's it's legal. You know, it's illegal for you to gamble in the streets, but it's legal for you to go to the casinos and blow your money away. You know, it's illegal for you to sell your body for some change on the streets, but it's legal for porn stars to do it. They can have paid clients, a.k.a. directors and producers, and then they sell their recorded material on their websites or distribute them on their adult video stores. So, again, you know, what is right and what is wrong in how you generate money is a complete hypocrisy. The truth is, and in certain situations, it's a sad reality, but whatever resources that's around your area, you're going to grab it. And whenever there's a high demand in your area, you're going to supply it. That's the mindset of those who jump into the drug game, prostitute game, firearms game. Like Ace Hood said in the song, what do you do when you got seven days to move out? You got to go and get it. Get it by any means. You know, you have, you know. I mean, if there's a high demand of of, of of drug addicts, if they de- if they demand drugs, what you gonna do? You're gonna be a drug dealer. You're gonna supply drugs. If there's a high demand for for tricking, for for guys to get their get their rocks off, what are you gonna do? You're gonna supply prostitutes. If there's a high demand in your neighborhood for 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 guns, you know, people want to carry guns. What you gonna do? You're gonna carry. You're gonna you're gonna sell firearms. So whatever resources that's around your area, you're going to grab at it. And whenever there's a high demand, you're going to supply it. And, you know, you have people, unfortunately, who are in situations or, or they weren't born with silver spoons in their mouths where they don't have the patience nor the luxury to even go through the rigorous tasks that we were taught at a young age that to go through. In order for you to gain an honest living or, the, or for you to be successful. You know, they say you got to go to school for 12 years. You got to go to college for four years. Then you have to get certified in order to get a successful career. While in the meantime, if you if you didn't go on a scholarship, you took out a loan, you got to go and you got to pay that loan back. All this just in order for you to make a decent living. You have people who got to provide and who were born in an environment where they have to go and they have to get it now. They don't have a choice. They don't. They don't, They can't just kick back and and focus on schoolwork when they got bullshit thrown. Complete. Continue to be thrown in their direction. Bills due. You know your your mom or your 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 your, your, your significant other is bugging you about uh, money for this and that. You know, and then you also have to deal with riff riff rafts that coincide in your environment. You got all these distractions. So my thing is, so if you have resources that are deemed illegal in your area, but they help and generate revenue where you're able to keep the lights on or food on the table, then my thing is, what do you expect from these people? I agree that everyone has a choice, but what happens when the choice you do make is not favorable to the realities and circumstances that you're faced with? You know in your heart that it's not right for you to go out here and sell drugs. You know, it's Wednesday. You got bills due. You know, you got bill. You got bills due on Friday. If you don't pay your bills, you gonna, you know, your power gonna get cut off. You don't have food in the refrigerator. You know, uh, T Mob across the street sell dope. You need money, but you know it's not right to go over there, holler at T Mob, and ask you to uh, give, ask him to give you some work. So what do you do? You go you go into the city, you go look for a job, you know, you might find a job at McDonald's. You might get the you might you know, you get the job, but they're not gonna pay you until next Friday. But this Friday coming up, you know what I'm saying, your light's gonna get turned off and you hungry as hell. Your family's hungry. You know. Yeah, you make the right choice, but the choice that you made is not favorable to the reality that you're facing now. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it's one it's one of those situations where you got you have to make a choice. And the choice that you do make, is it favorable to what's happening now? Or is it unfavorable? You know. 
I'm not asking you to. I'm not. You know. I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm not saying which. What is what? What decision is right or what's wrong? But my thing is, when you're faced with a reality that's not favorable to a choice that you made, that society deemed as right, you know, what do you do? And see, that's the reality that people don't see or they're just too stubborn to see. And if you can't see it from the perspective that I just gave you, then you're just in complete denial about it. And yeah, there are those who argue about, you know, you got these guys who, who jump into the so-called, you know, for example, the dope game who just want attention. Yeah, and they end up getting the wrong attention. You know, they want the attention of being the boss and wanting to get bitches. But they get the wrong attention from envious individuals, their competitors, and also law enforcement. But we also have to look at it from the, a different perspective. Of there are there are there are, you know, black men out here or black people out here who are out in these streets because, you know, unfortunately at that time they have to or they have loved ones that rely on them and they have to go and they have to get it now. And you have those who believe that this is the only route based from what they've seen in their peers as well as their older male figures. Especially when they don't even have a male figure at home who's making an honest living based off of the laws of the United States. When it comes to the progression of black people, you know, where we're trying to go, where we need to be, we're moving at a very slow pace. It's like black people are the tortoise and white people are the hare. We're not at a point where majority of black business owners are able to sign checks to their employees where they can be paid five, maybe six to seven figures yearly. Let's be real. I I mean, black people, we weren't even allowed to get the same amount of education that whites have been getting until like the 1950s, 1955 Brown versus board of education. Before then blacks weren't even educated enough or even have the resources provided for them to where you have black CEOs who could have corporations and were able to build facilities that could hold and employ thousands of employees compared to white business owners. Mm -mm. Blacks weren't educated enough or had the resources to build their own skyscrapers compared to white people. Blacks had the money and resources to own mom and pop shops, like little shopping centers that you have in the neighborhood. Blacks didn't have the resources, the education to own and build a place that has like 100 floors filled with thousands of employees. Now, is it possible for us to get there? Yeah, it is. But like I said, blacks didn't get the education that whites have been getting until 1955. In 56 years, you know damn well majority of skyscrapers that you see like in New York are not run by black people. Whites had a three to four hundred year head start. There are white elites who can pass their work on or they can leave huge sum of cash for their children, their loved ones. Only thing blacks could inherit are their parents' homes that was left in their name, or the little barber shop, a little beauty salon that's around the corner. You get what I'm saying? It's gonna take more than fifty six to sixty years for you know black people to elevate out of poverty and into condominiums, mansions, and owning huge facilities that hold and employ people and pay your employees a lump sum of cash. It's going to take more than 56 to 60 years for majority of black business owners to own, you know, big skyscrapers, big facilities, big corporations instead of little mom and pop shops that are in the little that are in neighborhoods. They're in black neighborhoods. You know what I'm saying? 56 years compared to whites, 304 in years. Come on, man. I don't see it. Black people, we still got a long way to go. Blacks have always here in America had to work for someone and not for themselves. And then when they do work for themselves, it seems it's, it's deemed illegal. But anyway, you have to, you know, you have to look at it from that aspect. And you also have to look at it to the aspect of the work that black people used to do back in 18 to 1900s. Now, you know, it wasn't enough to where they could save it and pass it to their children and then their ch- children benefit from it. I mean, if that was the case, black people in poverty would be just a damn fairy tale. It'd be just a myth. There wasn't a P. Diddy or Russell Simmons or Jay-Z back in those times. But because of equal rights 
in 2000. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, blacks had the privilege to get to where we, to, to get to that point. But at times, we can't act as if there are people who will make the journey a difficult one. You know, let me use this silly analogy real quick. It's like, I got to put this. It's like blacks have the opportunity to drive on this highway that was only allowed for whites. But that doesn't mean that there aren't people on the side of the highway that's going to throw spikes on the road to keep you from progressing. And of course, they're going to be whites whose tires end up getting flattened as well. But my thing is, <laughs> why would the opposers make it so obvious that they're only attacking only black drivers, especially when affirmative action and equal rights are established? You know, you got the world watching this highway. So, of course, white drivers are going to get flattened as well. And the owners owners know this and the owners who who find the opposers, they're going to punish them for it. That's the purpose, you know, I mean, yeah, that's the purpose of establishing equal rights. You know, everyone in certain situations and circumstances, you're going to have those who are more privileged than the other. The owners of the highway, you know, they establish equal rights, but that doesn't mean that there aren't people who agree with the owners. My point is, is that blacks have the opportunity, but that doesn't mean that there aren't non-white non-black people who agree with equal rights or affirmative action and they'll try to subdue you or oppress you you know you have white people who say they get the short end of the stick and i'm like "Um, duh (laughs) that's why it's called equal rights no race should be more privileged than the other i mean why make it painfully obvious that it occurs with black people and not with other races Everyone everyone has equal privileges and they're equally underprivileged. And the ones that do discriminate, yeah, they get called out in the media. But again, people fail to look at it from that perspective and they'll continue to be in complete utter denial about it. Now, when it comes to black men wanting to own a business or they do own a business, work for self, there's also this talk from black women as well as other black men who express in a way by stating that black men are the white man's bitch you know this shame and tactic that's played a part whether it's minor or major it's played a part where you have black men who say to themselves you know I don't want to be the white man's bitch so I'm going to work for myself I think it's better for me to sell drugs because I'm my own boss than be up under some white man working the same plain nine to five job every fucking day being his bitch making him money. But instead, I'm going to go out here and sell this dope. Hope I get caught by law enforcement and I'll do maybe 30 to 50 years in prison. Hell, at least I wasn't the white man's bitch. Like people, in order for you to win the game, you got to play the game by the book. If you don't play the game by the book, you're going to lose. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it, it's so contradictory for black women as well as black men to scream out, you know, you're the white man's bitch. When, whenever black people get out of line, you know, you have, you have, let's just say it, you have black women who run to these systems established by white men. You know, you know, ranging from calling the police, getting a divorce, seeking child support, seeking welfare, getting a loan. For your before your up and coming business, who do you call? You call the white man. In the same sentence, you know you scre- you know you talking about some. You're the white man's bitch, but at the same time you're screaming, "Help! Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me help! I need your assistance, Mr. White Man." You know, let's be real. Can we be real? But anyway, so I think it's idiotic for anyone to say that you're the white man's bitch. Because it's like, okay, well, what other option do I have or you have living in a white-dominated society to where you can provide for yourself or your family in a legit fashion if you don't work for the white man? Why can't you just, why can't you just take the money that you're making working for the white man, save it, and invest it to you building your own brand or business? Like I said, is there a vast opportunity in working for the black man versus the white man? Not really. It's going to be difficult for you to make it. And it's going to be very difficult for you to win the game if you don't play the game by the book. I'm sorry. That's how it is living here. 
And also, it's not a very smart way to play the game or to win the game if you're not going to follow the rules. So when people sit here and say, well, Macadon, you're the white man's bitch for working for him. Okay, and what company do you, Mr. Black Man, run? Can I work for you? Can you provide me with the opportunity to be your bitch? What income or what revenue can you offer me for my services so that I may put food on the table, keep a roof over my head, keep my lights turned on? You cannot make it in society without fucking money, okay? You can't have a you can't have a roof over your head without money. You can't have food in the fridge without money. You can't travel if you like to travel without fucking money. How can you go about getting money? I can't work for the black man because he doesn't own a type of business that I went to college for. Okay, I went to college, I, you know, I got a bachelor's in IT. I don't know many black CEOs that own IT companies. Especially not in my area, you know. I didn't wake. I didn't wake up and said, you know, I want to live on the streets. I want to be. I want to live in a homeless shelter because, you know, I don't want to work for the white man. This is a white dominated society. I'm not working for the white man. So therefore, I'm going to make it difficult on myself to try to earn a decent living. I'm going to do it the hard way. It's better doing it the hard way than just being the white man's bitch. Like, why can't you just be smart? Work for the white man, save your money, invest your money to where you can own your own business, where you won't have to work for the white man. You know, nobody wanna look at it that way. It's pride is what's fucking people up. Having too much pride. And also you know, when you're saying you want to work for self, you know, you want to work for yourself, you want to become your own boss, you want to be independent, keep it real, man. No one is independent, not even those who run a business. You're dependent on people to invest in your work, your product. You're their bitch. You better supply what I demand, especially when there are other competitors that run a similar business as you do. You know, I mean, let's keep it. I mean, you got to look at it that way. You know, you have music you know musicians artists they're not famous without fans you have popular websites they're not successful without having subscribers to them supermarkets are not successful without people going in and buying groceries you know in different situations we are somebody's bitch because we are dependent on them to buy our products to invest in our work And also, you know, when people always, you know, you know, you're you're the white man's bitch. You know, when I when I hear people say that shit, I'm thinking to myself, I didn't see any jobs in my field of study where a black business owner was hiring. What sense does that make in saying that you're weak for working for the white man? Yeah, well, you're weak for not having resources or a business to employ black people who have a talent other than football, basketball, barber, rapper, janitor, entertainer drug dealer, gangbanger. A majority of sports and entertainers, drug dealers, gangbangers end up being the white man's bitch. Hello. But like I said, you know, besides all that, it's going to take black people three to four hundred years for everything to be on track. But it's not going to be smooth sailing because there are those who make it a race issue and don't want black people to progress, which is why they implement tactics to detour blacks from progressing. You know, they're dumping drugs into our community, putting liquor stores on the corners of black neighborhoods, just to name a few. Black people getting harsher prison sentences for minor ass crimes. And then when they do get out, they have a hard time finding ways to earn a decent living based on society's way of earning it legitimately. And also the pitting blacks against each other with BS propaganda. You know, this. <laughs> It's a lot. It's a lot of. It's a lot of sinkholes in the highway that keep us from progressing easily. Black people can get it together once they realize what's helpful and what isn't helpful. You know. So in conclusion, man, black men are not lazy, but they have the wrong idea when it comes to working in the white dominated society. If you don't run a legit business, there will be consequences. 
If you don't educate yourself on how to start your own business in a white dominated society, then it's going to be difficult for you to make it and it's not going to happen. If you work for the white man, nothing is stopping you from saving and investing in the future to where you can become your own boss. I've took what I learned from school and, and, and my jobs and I saved my money and I invest in, and invested my money that will benefit me. And I'll just say this, y'all. I predict in about a year and a half, it's going to get to a point where I have my own whole turkey on the plate. <laughs> you know, now, whether you want to believe me or not, that's fine. But I know the direction and where I'm going. White people had a three to four hundred year head start. Black people were just heading towards our 60th year since Brown versus Board of Education. The education that blacks have is also by a mouse and a keyboard click away. I hope that, you know, like I said, we're in the 60th year. I hope in the next 300 to 400 years, which I know I'm not going to live to see. I hope that black people will get to a point where. Black people can employ each other and sign six or seven figure checks to other black people. I hope for more black millionaires and billionaires. I hope that black people will become a minority in poverty. I hope the prison population will go down. I hope black men and women do get it together. And the relationships between black men and women will be promising. Black people, black people... (laughs) We can get on the ball if we just recognize what's bullshit and what is legit. And also recognize situations and choices that you do make are not beneficial. And the choices and situations you make are beneficial. Know what is right and what is wrong and how you do things. Black people, we have a lot to do. We can't be discouraged we, we, when we don't get what we want. You know, it's like a sports team, man. You, you're going to win games and you're going to lose games. And also, black people stop being stubborn when someone's laying some knowledge or a different perspective to different issues. And also, black people stop being so damn sensitive about every little tad bit thing. And maybe black people will get somewhere. I just hope black people continue to improve in their life, their family life, getting money, and just being successful. But please, do it in a legit fa- fashion and not the illegal way. Because doing it illegally is only temporary when it comes to your life. So, that's about it, y'all. Until next time, this is Macadon. I'm gone.